What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Cesar, and we are talking about Bitcoin today. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this from me. Um, talk about various cryptos and Bitcoin daily, essentially daily um, stocks as well. Whatever you guys want to see. You know, if you leave a request in the comment section, I do tend to those requests. Um, most of you want to see price predictions, right? But if, if you had a request on like what my opinion is about I don't know, something that's media driven or fundamentally driven. I'm, I'm more than happy to share my opinions with that as well. But most of what I do is technical analysis. And for those of you that are new that might not know what that is, technical analysis is essentially, I'm, I'm a weatherman, but for, for the price, right? So I just, I predict the price action using indicators and historical uh, statistics and data to, to generate a probability, a possibility of an outcome that we could see the price achieve. So whether that's up or down or sideways, whatever, you know, but basically I, I can predict if it goes up or if it goes down, that's, <laughs> and I say I can predict, um, that doesn't mean I can predict accurately, right? I try to be accurate, but nobody is perfect. Nobody in technical analysis is perfect. Everything that I say, take it with a grain of salt, right? Take it with a grain of skepticism because I've been wrong before. I will be wrong again. I've been right before. I will be right again. It's not about being right or wrong at the end of the day. It's really about risk management. You can be wrong nine out of 10 times in, in investing, in trading, and make money. You can be right nine out of 10 times and lose money, okay? It, if you have proper risk management or if you don't have proper risk management, right? The person who doesn't have proper risk management who's right nine out of 10 times, that one time they're wrong, they can lose it all. The person who does have proper risk management, they've conserved their capital over those nine times in a row that they're wrong, but that one time they're right, it just takes that one man, they can make it all back and then some. So it really is about risk management. It's not about being right or wrong. Perfect example of this, I had a streak whenever I was starting out, it was maybe my third year trading, uh, doing technical analysis. I had a streak where I was like 20 trades right in a row. And I was wrong one time and I did not apply proper risk management because I was on a heater. I thought I was invincible and I lost all of it. I didn't lose all my money, but I went back to neutral where I started. So, so literally flushed it all out. 20 trades correct in a row. They weren't humongous trades, but little nibbles each time. And they were, they were all correct. Ups, downs, whatever. And one time wiped it all out. Pers that's a personal story. And I'm sure, I'm sure I'm not the only person with that story out there, man. It happens to all of us. But again, if you apply good risk management, that's where it doesn't matter if you're wrong, right? If you apply good risk management, you can afford to be wrong. You'll live to fight another day as long as you're using metrics and tools and indicators that, that can generate probabilities that are more in your favor than not in your favor. Over time, you will do well, right? You need that edge. And that's what technical analysis is, man. It's just hopefully something to give you an edge. So enough, enough babbling. Let's talk about Bitcoin today. I hope I didn't lose anybody, but we're just doing quick short-term analysis anyways. This video shouldn't go on too long. You know, we're at the 382. I, I did have the goal set in mind yesterday that we would close above the 382. And we actually didn't do that. We did something that's very, very common when interacting with the 382 on the first pass here is piercing through it and then closing below it. Generally with this look, I would expect that we move back to the 236 and then up. I did say yesterday as well that I'm not necessarily expecting a move back to the 236, though if, if that happened, it wouldn't look bad. It's very normal, okay? It's actually a good look. But the reason I'm not expecting that is because I don't really know if we're gonna break 62K. To me, breaking, closing above 62K was such a big deal, um, and not, not the biggest deal in the world, but relative to what we're doing, I think that that was such a big deal. I just don't see us closing below it or moving below it again. I mean, perhaps we do pierce below it and then close back above 62K, like in the same day we hit this red line and then bounce and close back up. It's not that far, $61,400 at the red line, 236, and then 62K, it's just a $600 difference on an asset that's worth $63,000 right now. It wouldn't be crazy, but, I'm not so sure if we do interact with this 236. However, I wouldn't be surprised if we pulled back a little bit today with the interaction that we had yesterday. If we look at the four hour as well, it kind of looks like we had a double top. We are hovering, we are lingering around this three, uh, 382 area, the yellow line. This could be you know, uh, a good sign. It could be something that leads to a more kind of explosive move to the upside. But if we look at the RSI, 
we've bounced off of this 60 zone once the bullish area of control an area that we found resistance here resistance there now we're finding support on it we didn't get any follow through right we got a slightly higher high but we, we closed at a lower high we had more volume and we didn't go anywhere that's not a good look when you're getting more volume coming in but you're not going anywhere it's looking like you're going somewhere but you're getting like a fake out a fake breakout that's not a good look um here we are interacting with the 60 area again if we don't get follow through this time I think it's very likely that we're gonna move back down. But it's, it's not dramatic, right? We move back down, it's not gonna be anything crazy. The area that I'm looking for, like at the most from the current price would be somewhat of like a two and a half to 3% drop from here. Absolutely, the price can go below the 236 and be fine. We just don't want a daily close below two, the 236, okay? Just like here on the, th oops, on the 382, we were looking for a daily close above it we didn't get that. The price moved above it. You have the wick up here above the 382, but that doesn't matter, right? If we wick below the 236, that doesn't matter. We just, we don't want to close below it. But really, I, I, again, I'm having a hard time seeing us stay below 62K for too long. So um, nonetheless, all this means, guys, is I am expecting sometime this week, it's the beginning of the week, pro probably over the coming days, we will make a move, something like this, that's like a higher low based off of this low here. And then on this next interaction with the 382, we will break above it and potentially make our way up towards 66 and a half to 67 and a half thousand dollars. Unless we're just making that move right now. You know, maybe I'm wrong. It's it's not as common, but it happens too. It's, it's not 100% guaranteed. You know, whenever you get a day like this, what we had yesterday, where you wick above it, but close below it, we could still follow through. We absolutely could, but if we do close above the 382, I'm gonna say the same thing I said yesterday. I don't think that we would just immediately go up to the 61869. We could, it happens, it's possible, but more likely than not, we would just consolidate above around this uh, 382 area, right? And then move up. That, that would be my kind of expectation. But right now, expecting to move down toward 62K, 61.4K, somewhere in that area. And then, and then up from there. So that's uh, that's kind of what I would expect. It could happen today. Perhaps we just make the move really swift. It could happen over like the next three or four days. It could take a little bit of time, whatever. But I would expect after this first week of July, maybe even toward the end of it, um, we will likely start moving back up again. And that's all I got to say. So if you like the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more content. The one hour to me looks a little bit bearish, right? You've got that bearish divergence. It's already been fulfilled, but. I mean, the volume's building, but your, your price is just not growing. It doesn't, it doesn't look right to me. It doesn't mean that it can't go up. Volume's a tricky thing sometimes, but I do think that we're going to move down. So again, with that, I'm going to leave you. So take care. Have a great night. See you on the next one.